Praise God in His sanctuary. Praise Him in the firmament of His power. Praise Him for His mighty acts. Praise Him according to His excellent greatness. Praise Him with the sound of a trumpet. Praise Him with the psaltery and harp. Praise Him with the timbrel and dance. Praise Him with stringed instruments and organs. Praise Him upon the loud cymbals. Praise Him upon the high sounding cymbals. Let everything that hath breath praise the Lord. Praise ye the Lord. Amen. Genesis chapter 17. We're going to go 1 through 5, and then we're going to go 15 through 19. Thank you, Jesus. That how you got it, Brother Tim? Praise the Lord. Before we do, I want, to, I want to preach on this thought, and I want you to think about this. God is not finished with you yet. God is not finished with you yet. Yeah, God still has a work for you to do. Amen. God still has plans for you. God is still working on those plans and fulfilling those plans in your life. I don't mind telling you, echoing and parroting back some of the things that Brother Tim and Brother Rex has said. Wednesday night really is my favorite night to preach. I get to preach to the seats and people. Sometimes we don't have the five, six, seven, eight. Uh, tonight's a pretty good crowd, but... I enjoy preaching on Wednesday nights. I get to, I get to preach to Spirit. How many of you have been baptized in the Holy Ghost? Come on, man. Man, spoke in tongues. Isn't that, isn't that powerful? Almost every almost every individual in here has been. Somebody asked me one time, you need to preach on the baptism in the Holy Ghost more often. So on a Sunday morning, Mr. Red, I said, how many of you have been baptized in the Holy Ghost? 99% of them raised their hands. That's a pretty good race. And I give God a praise for that. Amen. 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 God is not finished with you yet. Let's go back to our scriptures, please. And when Abram was 90 years old and nine, 99 years old, isn't that something? <laughs> the Lord appeared to Abram and said unto him, I am the almighty God. That's a sermon right there. I am the almighty God. Walk before me. Be thou perfect. Verse 2. And I will make my covenant between me and thee. And will multiply thee exceedingly. And Abram fell on his face. And God talked with him. Saying. As for me, behold, my covenant is with thee, and thou shalt be a father of many nations. Neither shall thy name any more be called Abram, for thy name shall be Abraham. For a father of many nations have I made thee. Stop right there, brother Tim. Abram is the father of sons. Abraham is the father of nations. That's, that's the difference. So you see a major shift in his life. God wants him to have sons. He's already had Ishmael. But you're about to have the son. And not only are you going to have a son, but you're going to have many after thy seed. We're going to skip to 15. 
to save you the reading of much. And God said to Abraham, as for Sarai thy wife, you can say the same for her, thou shalt not call her name Sarai, but Sarah. Sarah shall her name be. 16. And I will bless her, and I will give thee a son also of her. Yea, I will bless her. And she shall be a mother of many nations. So do you see the difference now between their names? Says, For Abraham is the father of son. Abram, father of son. Sarai, mother of daughters, which they had later. I will bless her and she shall be a mother of nations. Kings of people shall be of her. Man, what a mighty prophecy that is. Kings are going to come out of your lineage. Spiritually and physically, you're going to birth kings. Isn't that powerful? 17. Then Abraham fell on his face and laughed and said in his heart, Shall a child be born unto him that is 100 years old and Sarah that is 90 years old bear? And Abraham said unto God, Oh, that Ishmael might live before thee. And finally, verse number 19. And God said, Sarah thy wife shall bear thee a son indeed. Thou shalt call his name Isaac. I will establish my covenant with him for an everlasting covenant and with his seed after him. So here we have the famous story of the fulfillment of God's promise to Abraham that he would bless him with a son. Of course, Abraham is 99 years old and Sarah is 90 years old. Could you imagine being 90 years old to go to the doctor? I've been having some stomach trouble. Well, <laughs> you're about to have a son. Yeah. Some of the mamas in here just said, what? <laughs> so Abraham was 75 years old when he left Haran, Genesis 12, 4. He was 86 years old when the son Ishmael was born of Hagar, the servant girl, Genesis 16, 15 through 16, for those of you that are scribing down notes. And he had waited some 25 years for God's fulfillment and promise to give him a son through Sarai at the time. So now it had been 13 years since he had heard anything from God. I don't know if, we could, I don't know if some of us in here can make it 13 years without getting some kind of word from God. In other words, for the last, I'm not saying God didn't speak to him at all, but the last recorded word was 13 years previous to this. I feel the Spirit of God so strong in here tonight. Come on. Come on. I, want, I want us to go back, Brother Tim, if you would, to verse number 17. I want you to watch Abraham's response to God's promise being fulfilled. As I followed his scriptures, I thought about verse 17 and Abraham's response to God's appearance. And the Bible says that Abraham fell on his face and laughed. And said in his heart, shall a child be born to him that is 100 years old? And shall Sarah, that is 90 years old, bear? And I thought to myself, all, all the years that I've been a preacher, I've read this and I've been like, wow. This guy is laughing in the presence of God. Now here God's getting ready to do one of the mightiest, make one of the mightiest covenants in the whole word of God. And the man's laughing. Isn't that, that, that not what it says? He fell on his face and he laughed. And that's not part of the meaning of laughter here, but I thought. Maybe Abraham's laughter was not meant to diminish or blast in the presence of God. And I thought about it for a moment. I said, surely God would have smote him dead to ashes right where he stood. Because he had already introduced himself to I am Almighty God. But get this in a moment. I said, surely he didn't bring his attitude that kind of insolence and blasphemy. That God spoke to him seriously and laughed in the face of God. So the more I pondered it, and the more I thought about the way God was trying to tell him that I'm not finished with you yet. It don't matter your age or where you're at in life or what season you're going through. I am almighty God and I am ready to use you. Come on, somebody. I thought about it, perhaps. This was not laughter to be perverted or shameful. But maybe he meant an inexpressible or indescribable 
especially on one day. The tube had been in her throat for maybe a day. The day before, she was whispering when I walked in. She said, hey, Pastor Ronnie. And I looked at her and I said, I can't, I can't believe I'm talking to you. You do realize she almost, I'm her family's here, so we don't want to upset nobody, but she's not. So we don't have to worry about it now. You do realize this young lady almost died four times. Yeah. Four times. <laughs> the doctor had given him less than 5% to make it. And I walked in and she said, my pastor, and I said, my friend. Jay and Tammy were standing there, her parents. And they said, Pastor Ryan, we want you to hold her hand. We want you to pray with her. And I grabbed her by the hand. And I was so overwhelmed and so overcome with emotion. That I just began to weep uncontrollably. I couldn't hold it. I just went, David, and I went. David and Tammy, not David, excuse me, uh, Jay and Tammy begin to weep. I watched that big grown man break down. He wept uncontrollably. He wept. He wept. I wept with her so much that my tears just soaked her hand and some of her wrist. I just wept. And I just wept. Let me tell you what happened. The power of God came in there. We were just celebrating. She said, I spilled the beans a little bit. I didn't mean to. The family looked mad at me. Thank you. Thank you, Jesus. They couldn't run that room. I said, you do realize you, you, you almost passed a couple times. And she looked at me and looked at them. They just looked at me. They said, anybody else? They later told me, anybody else better run on that pastor Ronnie. <laughs> and she, it dawned on her. She said, it's dawned on me. She said, I almost died, didn't I? I said, yeah. Quite a few times. And she said, I'm up to my sermon. She said, she lifted up her hands and she put her eyes toward heaven. And she said, I'm alive. And she took a deep breath. She said, I'm alive. She said, I'm not dead. I'm alive. And I'm well. And I'm talking. And I'm doing better. And I continued to hold her hand. And we wept. And we wept. And all of a sudden, the power of God fell in there. And we just began to laugh for joy. Have you ever just laughed for joy? I mean, just laugh. I mean, you just got so excited, so overwhelmed with joy. Glory, glory. That you just, that you just begin to laugh. I'm not talking about laughing in the spirit. I'm talking about just so much. I tell you, the joy of God came in. James was almost falling down laughing. Miss Tammy was laughing. And Miss, and Miss Ashley was just laughing for joy. And then Abraham fell on his face and he laughed. And I said he wasn't laughing to be disrespectful. That's what he was laughing about. He was like, because only God can do such a miracle. <laughs> hey, he was laughing because the, 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 the miracle that needed to be done. He's 99 years old. His reproductive system had been shut down and dormant for many years. And all of a sudden, God says, I'm not done.
Oh, boy. I got to tell you, I FaceTimed her before church. And I said, I, I said, well, I do challenge you, Miss Ashley. It's very challenging to do. I said, people over the years will pummel you down to sand if you let them. I said, you have breathed new life into my ministry. To watch you struggle and to struggle alongside you and to struggle with your family and to struggle alongside them and bond with you like this. I said, you breathe life. And God has spoken in my spirit, Ronnie, I'm not done with you. I'm not finished with you yet. And I tell somebody here today, God is not finished with you yet.
said, it means to pour out. In other words, I am the God who pours out blessings, who gives them richly, abundantly, and continually. So, so this is what he's saying. I am El Shaddai. I'm about to pour out my blessing on your reproductive organs, on your life, on your seed. And it's going to be continuous. It's going to be flowing. It's going to be dynamic for the end of time. Come on, somebody. Abraham, I believe you were saying, if I can paraphrase. Even though you're well past your years of reproduction, I am the God who is all sufficient, full of blessings, and I am ready to pour out my blessing on you. Some of you have given up on the work God started in your life, but I believe you're about to enter into a place of blessing. I believe that God is about to pour out a blessing on you. You can't even receive it all. God is going to show you that I am all sufficient. I'm not talking about big checks in the mail. That's good too. I'm not talking about big car, that's fine too. <clears throat> but I'm talking, about, I'm talking about fulfilling the purpose that God has placed on your life. Some of you, God, have not spoken to you in a while, and you've been wondering where God is at. I'm telling you, it might be tonight. I don't know who this is for. This is a Sunday morning sermon, a revival type sermon. This is for somebody in here tonight or watching somewhere tonight. There's pain in your process, but I'm telling you, God has not forgotten the promise that He has placed on your life. He is ready to be El Shaddai again to somebody in here tonight. You have been tried for a while. You have been fighting us for a while. You have been going through a drought for a while, a famine in a while. But I'm telling you, the manna is on the way. The doors of the heaven are about to be opened and you're about to be poured out a blessing that you can't receive it all. I believe he's telling Abraham that I'm not finished with you. I made you a promise and no demon in hell can negate that promise. Amen. No sickness in your body no family, no crisis in your family is going to be able to stop my blessing when I show up in your life. The heat is going to come. Life is going to come where it seems like there's no life. It don't matter your age. It don't matter what season you're living in. It don't matter what you're going through in your life. I believe God is saying, I... I am ready to fulfill the promise and nothing will stop it Thank from coming to pass. If you believe that, you ought to raise at least one of your hands and say, I received my El Shaddai blessing. I believe a season of plenty is coming my way. I believe my trial is almost over. I opened up my basket. I lift up my vessel. Pour out your ladder. Spoken to you with some 
your life. Even if it was 13 years ago, my Lord and my God, you hold on to the promise of God. And when it comes, you're going to experience everlasting joy. You're going to experience everlasting peace. And you don't have to guess if it's God. It will be God. And I'll tell you, laughter will visit your morning again. Laughter will visit you again. Peace will visit you will sleep again. You will have power again. Your dance will return to your feet again. You will come to God's house and feel fire again. Come on, somebody. God is not finished with you yet. You keep laboring. If you're laboring, it's not between you and everybody. You've got to remember this is between you and Him. Come on. Hallelujah. God is not finished with you yet. Abraham might say something like this. He is still putting your life in place just the way He planned it. So don't worry. But Donna, God still put the touches on your life. The older I get, I'll be 50 in August. I'm starting to realize that I got more years almost behind me than I got, be, than I got before. I feel an urgency. Amen. Come on. Come I on. do. Come on, preach. I feel an urgency. Come on, preach. To preach the gospel. I feel an urgency to work with great passion. Ashley has renewed a great passion. Not, not that I was passionless. It's not that I was getting stale. I love my ministry. I love preaching here. I love being here at Smithfield. Can I get it? I love being here. She reminded me that God's not done with me. Amen. And that the hurt, the disappointments, and the pain, and the struggle that come along with being a pastor is worth it. Yes. Because God's not finished with me. Come on, somebody. God is almighty in your life. You're El Shaddai. If he was here, I believe he would say this. If God is not finished with you, then you must finish what he has started in your life. If God has not given up on you, then you must not forgive up on you, must not give up on yourself. If God has not turned his back on your life and turned his back on your ministry or your crisis or whatever you feel God has called you to do, then you should rise up tonight and fight because God is on your side and he's not finished with you yet. I'm going to tell you right now, it's evident on Sunday morning. I get asked all the time, where's our people? I said, I don't know, I'm going to keep loving them. I don't look at that. Oh, I know they in trouble, I'm going to go to them. It don't matter how long I don't see them. You say you come here, I'm still going to visit you, I'm still going to love you, I'm still going to take care of you, and I'm going to tell you right now, Sunday morning service, that's how this church can look almost every service. Yeah. Somebody give God, just cut the hand here, I don't even need that. <laughs> one lady vividly told me one time, where's all these people? I said, you old, old crude you. I said, you need to get saved. Oh, nasty self. You worried about where they at? Go out and visit them then. That's right. Go find out. Why don't you go dig them up wherever they at? They'll help them get in here. Can I get a witness? Yeah. 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 Instead of complaining and crying about it, why don't you jump in and grab a shovel? Let me dig. That's Come right. On, Can I get a witness anyway? Yeah. We cannot let our circumstances deter us from what God has called you to do. When crisis comes in your life, or hardship comes in your life, or things happen in your life, you don't get deterred. God is still working. Sometimes you just can't see Him. When we always teach you and tell you just because God hasn't done it, that won't mean He can't do it. He just hasn't done it yet. Amen. You never know. He might be waiting on you. To get in a position where he can hear you, where you can hear from him. Listen, we can't let failure. Sometimes we fail, don't we? Sometimes we fall short of the glory of God. Sometimes we don't get it right. But you can't, you can't let failure stop you from accomplishing God's work in your life. Look at Peter. Look at Judas. Especially Peter. Peter denied the Lord. Said he didn't know him. You gotta remember, God, God's plan is bigger than your one failure. Can I get a witness there? God can look past your failure 
And look at it when he's not finished and says this is a stepping stone to help him finish what I started in his life. Somebody rejoice in the Lord and say amen. 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 Peter fell miserably. Yet he still cast out devils. Yet he still, even his very shadow healed people's life. I'm here to tell somebody here tonight, God is not finished with you. Somebody ought to rejoice. Amen. See, we're not going to preach too much longer. We're going to have time to pray. We want to have time to pray tonight. Look how far you've come. Why would you stop now? Come on, preacher. That's right. Don't let a season of discouragement or a battle with an individual or a situation in your life turn you back. Did, did you know that's what greatness really is? Mm -hmm. Is you keep going when you can't stop. You keep going. But bitter sins your enters your heart. That's what greatness is, Miss Donna. When you have a chance to turn back, but you say, I'm not going to turn back. Come on, somebody. Yeah. You trusted the Lord so far, and He's not forsaken you. God will not forsake you. I don't know who I'm speaking to in here or out there. Maybe this just, just message might be for somebody five years down the road. I don't know. Before we get to the end ending here, how many of you are living a life you thought you never would live? I mean, people said you wouldn't live the life you're living now. That was me. I was literally raised on Lord Bar Road. <coughs> Nothing good could come out of Lord Bar. The rest of us would go, but not without that cash flow. Listen, <coughs> even your friends and family couldn't foresee where some of you are at right now. But I'm telling you, I am where I am today because God is not finished with me. You are where you are today because God purposed it in his heart through your failures, through your setbacks, and through whatever it is that you're going through. I'm not finished with you, and I've still got you under construction. Amen. Think about where some of you have come from in the last 10 years of your life, or the last five years of your life. Oh. Listen, he has taken you this far and he will not leave the job undone. This is what he was telling Abram. I'm not going to leave the job halfway done. I'm not going to leave you halfway broken. I'm not going to leave you halfway directionless. I'm coming to you and to lay that, I believe God is speaking this to somebody's heart tonight. I am coming to you in the late hour of your life. And I'm going to use you. Your better days are before you and not behind you. I can multiply your life. I can make I can make your, I can make three years of your life better than 60 years of your life. Oh. Did you hear me? God can do more in one year of your life. In all of your years combined. Yes. How many of you know it's not yourself that brought you this far to where you are? Yes. But it's God's magnificent work in your life. I promise you, God is working in your life. God is hearing your prayers. When you pray over your lost loved ones or you pray over people, God hears your prayer. It's just not the season. To answer the prayer. You'd better be glad God don't answer your prayer sometimes. Yeah. In the way you want him to answer it. Somebody better give God some praise for answering our prayer. Yeah. Oh boy. We're about to hit it hard in the end here. We're going to have a season of prayer. If Abraham was here. I believe he would tell you this. You haven't seen God's best yet. This is what he was telling Abraham. You haven't seen my best work yet. I'm about to do things in your body and your wife's body. I've said it a thousand times. Could you imagine being Sarah, 90 years old? I just, I'm being facetious. Duh, they didn't have hampers back then. I know that. Some of y'all like to split hair, so I got to make that. Just waste like three seconds of my life to make that point. Duh. I'm just saying for the sermon's sake, she's walking with a buggy down through the baby aisle. And she's putting the Gerber in the, in the, in the basket. I, I, I didn't know you were going to have a child. I didn't know. Yeah, I had a child. I put, she put maybe one of the old gospel town gospels in there. I saw, I saw Sarah put the pampers. And she finally went. She finally dropped off the deep end. 
She put the pampers in the buggy. She put the baby oil in the buggy. Did you have grandchildren? Did Ishmael have children? No, this is my baby. 90, 90 years old. You haven't seen God's best work in your life yet. I'm telling you, I don't care what season you're in, how old you are, God still wants to do a great work. And some of you have yet to see Amen. what God wants to do in your life. Are you ready? Amen. You ready for the next one now? Don't throw the nanny. If they charge you, hit me. If they charge you, I don't know. I got a, I don't know. I got a feeling you might have my back way back. <laughs> you ready? I got this earlier today. If you're not dead, God's not done. All right. Come on. I said, you are the reason for this sermon tonight. Yes. She might be watching. If you are, God bless you, baby girl. Or if you watch it later, I'll give her a shout out. Yes. I'm telling you, God is not done. But you get actually told me today, she said, God is not done Amen. with me yet. Come on, so Amen. Amen. I ain't gonna lie, I don't like it when I hear my seniors say. Well, I'm going to pass the mantle on down to the next generation. I'm just going to sit back and retire and just watch the next generation oh. do the work. Last time I looked, Elisha did not drop the mantle until he was up in the heaven. Yes. And when he got up in the cloud, then he broke down the mantle. As long as you've got life in your body, you took that mantle. God is working through you. God is working with you. And God is doing my things in your life. See no fiery chariots in here. <laughs> Not that I know of, anyway. Last time I looked, I don't see no fiery chariots and fiery horses. If you're still alive, get back to work. Can Amen. I get a witness? Amen. Well, I've already done my part. Well, who, who said what your part is? That's right. That's right. I baked enough cakes. I cut enough grass. Last time I looked, glory to God, people still hungry. We're still having fellowships. People still need to be fed. People are still broken and people are still hurt. And the cake still makes a difference. If you go cut your grass, that still makes a difference. Come on, somebody. You haven't seen God's best yet. You're not dead. God's not done. And the seed of God's potential still lives inside of you. You hear me? What he planted in your life when you were 20-something years old, what do you think? Because you turned 70, the seed just died? Do you think because you turned 50? You think God, oh, he, oh, oh, he's 50 years old now. You know, oh, 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 she's 60 years old now. I guess I better, I guess I better take it easy on the old. No. No, he's back there telling you, yeah, let's go. That's Come on, somebody. Right. Did anybody think I got some help in your step? Is anybody here? You ain't gonna come get me. You ain't gonna come get me, are you? Can I come back and preach Sunday morning? Are you sure? Listen, the enemy says you can't, but God says you can. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. You hear me? The enemy says you can't, but God says you can. Yeah. The best me is yet to be. Yeah. Somebody point to yourself. Point to yourself. It's okay. You can be cheesy. I don't preach you cheesy. The best me is still to be. Say it again. The best me is still to be. Somebody better rejoice in the Lord. I don't know if I got time. I need to visit this and then, and then we need to have prayer. Lord, help me. I need to really need to skim. I, you really need to get this. Get this up. Bless him. Go ahead. Just a little bit more. I don't want you to start going to sleep. You come up here and pray. Leave your Lord. You're not finished with me. Yeah. <laughs> Go to our numbers eight. Read this one time. I said, "What in what? What in the what? What in the world does this mean?" I'm gonna exegete it for you. We're gonna have prayer. Is that okay? We will have a season, brother Tim. If you get us a song, we want everybody to pray. No live music after the service tonight. We're gonna pray. 
Yes, that's what I said. So, some of y'all act like God just walks out of church and we play something different. What's the matter with you? I'm glad God ain't that shallow like you are. Or like I am sometimes. And the Lord spake unto Moses saying, This is it that belongeth unto the Levites. So who's he talking to? The Levites. What do the Levites do? During this time they set up what? Tabernacle. They set up a brazen altar. That was their job. I promise I'm back to close. I promise. I see me looking at me like, oh God, here he goes. Watch this. From 20 and 5 years old and upward, they shall go in to wait upon the service of the tabernacle of the congregation. 25. And from the age of 50 years, they shall cease waiting upon the service and shall serve no more. 26. But shall minister with their brethren in the tabernacle of the congregation. This, 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 is, this is retirement for the Levite priest. This is what this is. To keep the charge and shall do no service, thus shalt thou do unto the Levites touching their charge. I read this thing one time and I said, what? What in the world is, what, what does that mean? Let me tell you what's happening here. The role of the Levite priest was very physically demanding. Could you imagine over your lifetime butchering thousands of, of bulls, thousands of goats, thousands, tens of thousands of doves? Remember the fire had it burned day and night. It was the Levite God to chop the wood. You think the preacher got it easy? Take a week off here. Let's get it. Let's see if you can handle it. Huh? Oh, fat boy, where you at? <laughs> huh? I'm going to wreck. Come on, bro. You took to that hospital boy. You would say, whoa, 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 According to the Bible, I'm 50. Brother David say no more riches. <laughs> this is what's happening. At 50 years old, they had done more than their share of work. It was time to sit down. And what is happening is, and I promise this is it all. I promise it's not a whole other sermon. I promise it goes right along with God's not finished with me yet. What's happening is the 50 year old man looked at the 20. By the way, you had to be 30 years old before you could work in the tabernacle. You had to be 30 years old. 25 years old. Remember the beginning? 25 years old. You had to be an apprentice for five years. In other words, we need to teach you how to go in the tabernacle so we can have you. Because if you go in there in any kind of way, you're not going to make it back out. So you got to go on a five-year apprenticeship, and when you're 30 years old, you can start breaking down a tabernacle, put the tabernacle back together when the pillar of fire and, 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 and by night and, 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 and all that stuff that you do when, when it arrives at night, goes in the daytime, and they're following the Lord. So here's what's happening. The 50-year-old person don't just stop ministry. This is what he does. The 50-year-old person don't have to butcher bullocks and cows anymore. What he does, he goes to the 30-year-old man and he says, the Lord likes it cut like this. When I get some of this sickness taken care of, and some of this, I'm going to get back on you and brother Tim. This has renewed my passion when I read this and studied this for this sermon. I realize that's part of my responsibility is to raise up another generation of ministers and continue to train the ones we got and deacon train and get back to my discipleship. Amen. To present the gospel of Jesus Christ in such a way. Right? Mm -hmm. And what do we do once we get them saved? We do what? Disciple mm -hmm. them. This is what I'm trying to teach you tonight. Nobody retired completely. Come on, bro. Listen to me. This is no longer just about you. I got retired because of hopefully the next, I don't know, 30 years. And I hope that somebody remind me when I'm preaching right now, 
Retirement don't mean quit everything you're doing and don't do nothing. That's right. Retirement means turn around because God is not finished using you. Come on, somebody. Because of your work history and your hard work all your life, you still, there are people still unfinished, you're still unfinished, and God is going to use you to touch a younger person's life. Please impart before you depart. Man, I've got so much wisdom and knowledge in here. Come on, let's pray. Come on. God's not finished with me. Come on, let's pray. If you can't make it to the altar, pray where you at.